we've made leaps and bounds as far as shoreline restoration work. When you have the shorelines choked with Phragmites and Tamarisk, it leaves very little room for shorebirds, for any of the other nesting species, or even our, our, our big game that wants to get down to the lake and eat and, and graze in that area. It makes that uninhabitable. From a restoration work standpoint, we, we have to be as proactive as we can be. From an internal lake ecosystem standpoint, uh, doing nothing is going to do, lead to greater harm than we're seeing today. 10,000, 14,000, 30,000 years ago, this lake, when it was Lake Bonneville, was much deeper, right? It was 1,000 feet deep in some places, 500 feet deep on average. And it was a lot colder and cleaner. Lakes go through an evolution or a life stage. We used to have native Phragmites along Utah Lake. And people kind of forget that that um, native Phragmites, there's still a little population down on the southern end of Utah Lake. And so it's native, Phragmites is native to Utah Lake and to Utah. The last ice age when we had the giant sloths, in southern Utah they found the little um, co coprolites, the little um, poops from the, fossilized poop from those giant sloths, and they were eating Phragmites. So Phragmites has been here forever, and now we're just concerned about um, a strain or a subspecies or whatever people want to call it from, uh, from coming from Europe or Australia. So that's the one that takes over, but and they, they both can breed together, so you really can't tell the difference. If you walk through this Phragmites, you're going to find a billion midges, right? You walk through there, you're going to just get covered. They like to hang out there to, to rest before they do their swarms of mate. So it's really good habitat for lots of things. That, when it's just a monoculture of Phragmites for miles, little patches are very beneficial.